Welcome to Kencho Quest. In this video, we're going to share our family's cost of living while living in Iskandar Putri. For reference, that's about a 20 minute drive from Johor Bahru, Malaysia. Our family was living there for about four months. We are slow travelers. We tend to rent Airbnb apartment rentals from anywhere from a month to about four months at the max. Because of that, we're paying monthly prices, which are a bit more expensive than if you were renting a place for an entire year. And for reference, we are a family of five with three young children. We lived at the Tiga Suites, which is located in Putri Harbor. We did an entire apartment tour video on that, so you can watch that after this video if you're interested. We'll link it down below. So the first thing you probably want to know is what was our rent? We were paying a total of 3,750 ringgit per month. That comes out to about 850 US dollars. This was for a large two bedroom, two bath apartment with over 1,200 square feet, including washer dryer and a ton of other amenities. Now our utilities, including internet, were included in the cost of the rent that we paid, but we're gonna give you some examples if you were paying for your own utilities. We use a lot of electricity, <laughs> we think, compared to the average family size, but maybe if you're a family five like us, you might as well. So for instance, we use the washer every single day and a dryer every single day. So based on these things and doing work at home, we have laptops on all the time. Our electricity usage is on the higher end, so I would say we were spending about 400 ringgit per month, which is about 90 dollars. So just to be clear, if it hadn't already been included in our rent, we would have spent about $90 per month for electricity, gas, and water. Home internet was also included. We had a 100 megabits per second connection, and that would cost you about 99 ringgit if you had to pay for that separately. There are a ton of other options available for fiber optics, for instance, through Maxis. If you want a 500 megabit connection, that will cost you about 219 ringgit per month. And you can even get slower connections for cheaper. In addition to having internet at home, each of us also had internet and phone service on our phones for the two of us, and then our children, two of them have a watch that can also make phone calls, so we had plans for those four. Yes, and we were using actually two different plans. We were using Digi and U-Mobile, and the only reason we have separate plans is because we actually purchased them on separate days. Now, the service that we have was for unlimited data, unlimited phone calls, and six gigabits Per month of hotspot and we were paying 35 ringgit for each of those plans so that comes out to a total of 140 ringgit per month for four people pretty awesome which is around us 31 dollars per month you're not going to find phone plans with unlimited internet for that cheap for in the u.s lines. next step is food we'll tell you the total per month and then break it into a couple categories the total cost for food is 5080 ringgit per month that comes out to about 1130 US dollars per month. Now, if we break it down into categories of the groceries, it's 3,430 ringgit per month, which is about 760 US dollars. And we would shop at places like Pasar, Jaya Grocer, and Ben's Independent Grocer. Now, this might be considered kind of high for most people, we think. However, we eat a very, uh, what would you say, organic, rich diet. Wherever we are in the world, we tend to spend about this much per month on food and it's because we opt for things like grass-fed, organic, free-range eggs, even gluten-free products. Some of those are imported products which are always more expensive than the local products. So I'd say we spend more than you than, might than otherwise. The average family would. Let me show you some examples of what food costs here at the Pasar, which is one of our favorite markets. Here are some Cavendish bananas for 2.9 ringgit, and this is 0.75 kilograms. Imported avocados from Australia, 13.99 ringgit each. Some cherry tomatoes, organic, 4.9 ringgit for 200 grams. Also 200 grams, organic leaf lettuce, 5.7 ringgit. Green spinach, 3.9 ringgit, 200 grams. Imported Australian organic carrots for 5.28 ringgit. Comparison, some non-organic Australian carrots, 2.52 ringgit. And here is some Promex grass-fed butter. It is super cheap in my opinion at 10.99 ringgit. And also Anchor butter, 10.99 ringgit. This is on sale. It's usually for about 13 ringgit. And here is some grass-fed steak from Australia. This is a sirloin and it is 24 ringgit for 200 grams. And also some ground beef from Australia. This is 12.09 ringgit and it is 0.316 kilos. 
Now for restaurants, yeah, we do eat out a lot and we order a lot of food. That amount is 1,660 ringgit per month, which is about US $370. And again, like I said, we order a lot from Grab, Food Panda, and we eat a lot of local restaurants such as the Spice Grill, get drinks at Honey Bee. And we're finally at the point where our eight-year-old and four-year-old are really eating meals. So, you know, our youngest, our toddler maybe just shares, but we're at the point where we're buying about four meals whenever we eat out. The next category is transportation. Specifically for us, we were renting a car during this time. We Wada. rented a car through Wada that month. Wada! Okay. <laughs> The service has been fantastic and they have great rates, great car selection, and we highly recommend them. We will put a link in the description below along with a coupon code. Use coupon code KENSHOWQUEST to get a very good deal on your next rental car. We were renting a Pro Dua Myvi 1.3 liter. Yes, it's a little bit on the slower side and you know, you gotta really press on the gas pedal sometimes to make it go. However, it gets awesome, you know, gas mileage. So we were only filling up the tank once per month on that. And the cost for renting that car per month was 1,650 ringgit. I think we got a pretty good deal again because we're renting it monthly. And that also includes the insurance of the car. And the gas, we only paid 50 ringgit to fill up the tank and we only had to do that once a month. Now granted, we don't drive a ton. We do mostly city driving, like taking the kids to swimming lessons and going grocery shopping, the Legoland, and maybe into Johor Bahru a couple times a month, right? Yeah, so we don't do a ton of driving again, it's mostly... Mostly swimming lessons once a week. Yeah, local yeah. drive. For you facing hiked up gas prices these days, that's only about $11 a month we were spending on gasoline. <laughs> kind of crazy, huh? But yes, gas in Malaysia is super cheap. That car was on the small side, but it worked for a family of five. We were able to fit in the back seat a car seat and then two children wearing their Ride Safer vests, so that worked out for us. It would also fit for adults comfortably. Alternative forms of transportation are the bus or grab car. However, when we were using grab, we were having a really difficult time to get a ride. Sometimes trying to get home from Legoland, we'd be waiting up to an hour for a ride. So it just got to be too frustrating using that with young children. Right. I think one of the reasons for that is Iskandar Putri is more in the suburbs away from Johor Bahru. So probably most of the drivers are coming from Johor Bahru unless they're already in the area. The next category is health insurance. We use Safety Wing Nomad Insurance. So that's a travel health insurance that's for major emergencies. They do have different plans if you're an expat who's moved abroad and you're staying in one place and you want more thorough full coverage. But we have the one that's just for if something major happens. So under that plan, we pay for two adults plus one of our children and then two of our children are covered for free under each of us. We're paying 815 ringgit per month or about 180 US dollars per month for that plan. There are some other travel related benefits in that plan for things like lost luggage or if your flight was delayed and you needed to stay in a hotel overnight or political evacuation. So there are other travel related benefits to the plan. We'll link it below. Related is medical. While we've been living here, we took our children a few times to Glen Eagles Hospital. For three of our kids, they had just their annual checkup, kind of catching up with that. And for our youngest, he had the immunizations, which was the most expensive. This is a very nice modern hospital. However, the prices were a bit on the expensive side. We spent about 400 ringgit per month, which would be about 90 US dollars. Now we paid that during that time we were living in Iskandar Putri, but this is not something we'd be paying every single month out of the year. It was just that during that time frame, we took them in for their annual checkups and that won't happen again for another year. The next category has to do with the fact that we are Americans, but we are abroad for extended times. So we have a mail receiving service back home. We recently switched to post scan mail just because they had a Hawaii address available and we do consider ourselves still to be residents of Hawaii. We really wanted that mailing address. Previously, we had used virtual post mail for years, but the closest we could get there was a California address and we really just didn't want to be associated with California anymore. If you're looking, I do prefer virtual post mail. We haven't had the best experience with post scan mail. With these bigger companies that offer addresses in multiple places, they're using whoever the local service is and the local service they're going through in Hawaii just Not doesn't the do the best job. They scan the envelope so we can see them, but they don't do a very clear job for us to see who sent it. 
through one of these mail receiving services, they can scan your mail, you can see a digital copy. If you want, you can have the envelope forwarded onto you in whatever country you're in, or if you don't need it, you can just have it shredded or recycled. So it's a great way to deal with mail. Also, we can receive paychecks there and digitally deposit those as well. I just want to add the reason why we switched service and why we didn't want it in California anymore is due to tax reasons. So if you are an American, you want to make sure that you try to find a service that is located in your state. Now, in particular, California wants to charge you taxes whether or not you live there or not because we had an address there. And so we had a big hassle with that, and that's why we really wanted to switch it to uh, Hawaii, which is our state of residence, and that really helped clear things up, though the service is not as good through post-scan mail. And if you're looking to get one of these mail receiving services, set this up while you are still at home because there is a certain form that needs to be filled out and sometimes also notarized to submit to the US Postal Service to allow the service to receive your mail for you. So that's something to do while you're still at home in the US before you leave to go abroad. Next up is entertainment. Again, keep in mind we are a family with young kids and our entertainment reflects that. So we had two major entertainment expenses while we were here. One was that we signed up two of our children for Happy Fish Swim School for 10 week classes. And the other was that we got annual passes to Legoland. If you haven't yet, make sure you watch my guide to Legoland Malaysia. So for our annual passes, we were paying for two adults and two children and our youngest was free. That all boiled down to 1,610 ringgit per month or about 360 US dollars per month. I think this could be a little bit high, but every month something comes up. Yeah, but I mean, for Legoland, we go there twice a week, so well worth it. <laughs> we, somebody was surprised when, when we mentioned that we take our kids twice mm -hmm. a week to Legoland. We paid for those annual passes. We're we were gonna it. use right. those annual passes. So that was our consistent entertainment while we were there. And if you're interested in Happy Fish Swim School, we'll also put a link in the description below. It's an awesome school for kids. Next up is educational expenses related to homeschooling. So whenever we get to a new city, we head off to a bookstore. We let the kids get some actual physical books. I like to take them to a store to let them get some art supplies. And this reflected the beginning of the school year where we paid for some online apps for our eight-year-old to use, Brain Pop, a geography app, a Japanese app as well. So those are expenses that we would have every single month. During this time, we spent about 718 ringgit per month, which is roughly 160 US dollars a month. But again, this was just kicking off our school year. Since we are traveling, we can make up our own rules. We started our school year at what would have been the beginning of summer vacation back home. And now that it's time that it's fall and school starting back home, we're already well on our way on this school year. And that works really well if you're a traveling family. So if we need to take time off for like, if we go for a week adventure or something like that, then our kids don't get too far behind. Yeah, we get to choose when we take a week here, a week there, and then we just kind of ignore things like Christmas break or summer <laughs> vacation to make it all balance out in the end. The final category is clothing. Again, this was kind of specific to the time. We bought some swimwear for the swim classes, some clothes, and I also bought a pair of glasses since my toddler broke one of my pairs. And it is always good to have a spare pair of glasses while traveling if you're like me and you really need them because when the toddler throws them in the river, snaps them in half, it's nice to not be blind for the rest of the day until you can find. <laughs> yeah, we've had our glasses go missing over it the years. a lot. <laughs> The good thing is, at least in, in Asia, prices are significantly cheaper than in the US. We spent about 390 ringgit per month or $87 per month. But again, things like glasses, I'd probably only get those once a year. And now for our grand total monthly expenses while living in Iskandar Putri. Dun dun dun. The total is 15,257 ringgit per month, or about 3,392 US dollars. Which I would round at $3,400. That's an easier way to think about it. Now, I always like to emphasize in these videos that this is not the absolute cheapest you can live, especially if you are just an individual or just a couple of two, you could definitely have lower cost of living. For us, what we're always looking for is comfortable cost of living for our whole family, along with entertainment for our kids. So I say it really varies. You could spend less, you could spend more if you wanted to. Yeah, and what we've learned as our family grows 
the more comfortable the kids are, the better life we're having overall. So we don't mind spending that little extra as it gives us peace of mind. We've been living a nomadic lifestyle for over 10 years now. We have lots of resources here on Kencho Quest if you're interested in doing the same, including a playlist of cost of living in various cities around the world. Such as Osaka, Japan, Penang, Malaysia, Bangkok, Thailand. So please subscribe for more tips on traveling long term or moving abroad.